and I'm reconsidering everything. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel La Fraise, I'm Noemi and today we're going to make this gingham dress and the story starts on the 5th of April with the first clips of this video. Let's go back. I think we're in one of those moments where my wife would be like, oh, you always overestimate what you can do in the time you have. And you know, I think being optimistic is not necessarily a negative thing, but yeah, I was a bit optimistic. It was like, I'm gonna cut all of those projects and then I will clean the entire house. And well, what's happening is that now it's 10 p.m. I still, still cutting my last project. I have just cut the pink bra if you i don't know what orders the videos are coming in so just so you know for you know transparency behind the scene i have cut in order the pink bra and then i have cut milo's coat and now i am cutting the lining of my gingham dress and i really thought a long time about what i wanted to do with this gingham dress for a while i was thinking maybe i would um oh damn it this is on the fold I'm so annoyed already. Um, yeah, now I'm reconsidering everything. This gingham dress is made of double goes and I was full of confidence. And then I, I explained in one of my very first videos about my make nine. Then I was listening to this podcast, Love to Sew, and they were talking about double goes and saying how it frays a lot. And I'm just worried about, oh, my nose twitching. Sorry, I'm just worried about finishing my seams in the best way so that it lasts and so I was like oh maybe I'm gonna make bias tape out of this leftover fabric I have and just bias tape finish all of my seams but that seems like I don't know I'm not fully convinced the original pattern says to line everything so I'm still considering doing this but I don't have enough of the yeah I don't think lining the double goes with double goes really makes sense I also don't think I have enough fabric because in the end I changed the plan I have for that fabric a bit last minute. But now I see that this is, needs to be cut on the fold. I can probably just add a seam though. I mean, you, you're going to see this once the dress is finished and it's either gonna have worked or not. But yeah, I'm really, I'm really torn between do I make a lining, do I not make a lining and it's a... Uh, it's a bit, yeah, it, it's a bit of a tough one because I'm also really worried about the zipper. Apparently zippers and double goes don't work too well together because the double goes is really loosely woven. And so that means that any pressure on it could actually pull it apart and that the fabric might not hold. So, you know, it's exactly that type of project when it's like, it's really hard not to put effort into it because I'm just scared it's not gonna last and it's gonna fall apart. But at the same time, it's all cut. Like, I, I just need to move forward at this point. There's no point not moving on. I think I'm gonna go with the lining. I am scared of it, but there is no perfect option at this point. So let's let's do this. It's a bit, um, yeah, it's, um, it's tough, but we can do this. Double goes, we're not scared. Yes, we are scared, but there's no way but, um, there's no way but forward. Thank you for the moral support. We'll make this in double goes. I will, I didn't realize this needed to be cut on the fold, but I don't have a big enough piece to cut it on the fold, but I will add a seam allowance and I will piece this together to create a piece lining. Here we go. I'm now realizing from filming videos, something that really annoyed me from watching some YouTubers is how much they repeat themselves. And now I'm realizing it's because I watch like the youtubers i watch i watch all of their videos so if they come back with similar topics they repeat themselves but now i'm realizing i am also repeating myself a lot because if you have watched all of my videos you've heard about this double ghost dress a million times and you're probably like yeah we know you're scared of it but just like get on with it and stop talking about it which now i understand but actually filming the video i don't want people that have not seen the previous video to miss the information and to be confused and so I repeat it so that we all on the same page but then it's I'm like oh I am this person who repeats herself and I was finding it annoying but actually it seems like it just makes sense to repeat yourself so I hope I hope this is not too repetitive and too boring 
but um, yeah, now I see why why people do it and realize I'm doing it too. And even in some vlogs, I just, I mean, in the vlog where I'm making Milo's coat, I repeat 60 times, I just made a bra and I'm so frustrated and I'm so happy to be making this coat. And in my knitting vlogs, I just say over and over how excited I am. So apparently I'm also someone who just repeats herself and I hope, I hope it's not too annoying and I hope I'll get better with practice as well from making more videos. So I have cut the side back bodice and the back bodice I still need to do side front and middle front and I have run out of this green fabric I'm very lucky because actually my gingham is really not see-through so I think think I can pretty much get away with putting anything inside so I'm gonna look in my whoop, scrap fabric bag and actually I have a tiny bit of this double go still would I dare to line it with more of it? I mean, I may as well use it for this, no? Seems like a smart thing to do. Is it smart or is it silly? Well, we'll see. Oh, okay, inspiration, inspiration. I have some very stable linen and maybe I use this for the waistband and this way I don't need to interface it. Oh, I'm feeling inspired. And otherwise, if I need, I have, well, this is actually a blouse that I'm gonna cut because it has issues. Um, so if I need, I can also use some of this viscose. But I think I'll have enough with this now. And then the waistband in the more stable fabric. Ooh, I feel really inspired by this choice. I think that's quite smart. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Awesome, yay, go scrap bag. Always have, feel like Mary Poppins with my bag. Ooh, hit me in the head. Feel like it's the bag that has all the magic fabrics you need for your project so okay, let's keep going i'm gonna i'm gonna be wild and just line it with the main fabric backtracking backtracking it was all a lie i really thought i had like <laughs> it felt like i had a piece of fabric but actually i really have only small scraps um and with those small scraps i can't cut i mean i would like if i do it in the double goes not to have to piece this which is supposed to be on the fold and yeah, it's not gonna work. So I think I'm gonna go back to the original plan, which was to cut it in the blue top. And I'm gonna keep this. Um, yeah, that's not a, that's not gonna work. I mean, I could cut this piece in the double goes, but then I feel like it's just a bit crazy to have a viscose, a linen, a double goes, another viscose. So I'm just gonna cut the entire bit in the other fabric so that it's a little bit consistent in the inside and not like, as many fabrics as we can in the lining. Like, let's keep it to a minimum. I just want to say, I really enjoy having you guys here. It feels like my invisible friends while I sew. It's nice to have some company. And it's nice to, I don't know, chat through what I do. And I'm uh, really enjoying having you guys. So thank you for sewing with me. If you're sewing with me or if you're knitting, I hope your knitting's going well. Don't forget to stretch your upper back and move a little bit. But um, yeah, it's very nice. I hope you're having fun hanging out with me too. I hope you are sewing or knitting a fun project at the moment. And if you have, like me and my gingham dress, a project you have cut a while back and that you are too scared to do, remember that you can make anything, screams the room behind me. Yes, you can make anything. That's right. Yay. Ooh. Okay. Let's, let's go back to work. Hi guys, it's the weekend. I have time to sew and I'm gonna stop procrastinating. I'm going to finish my gingham dress. Hopefully this weekend, I'm really going to give it a big push and give it all I have to have it done and over with so I can start with more fun projects. I have dinner with friends tonight, but it's 3 p.m. so I still have a couple of hours where I can get a lot of sewing done. My wife's currently playing video games in the same room where I sew, so I don't think it's gonna be possible for me to film with sounds while I'm in there, so I'll film clips and add the sounds on later, which is why I'm coming in this room to quickly intro it, so. I posted yesterday what I sewed this spring, plus my summer plans, and really having to say once more that I have not finished this gingham dress, even though it was in my very, very first sewing video on this channel. I'm like, let's get cracking with this. I am getting it done this weekend, so let's go. So yeah, as you can see, I had to piece even the front little piece of bodice that I cut from that blouse I had. I had to 
piece, the tops and the back that I had shown you, I couldn't cut it on the fold. So I also have a little piecing in the back and I have zigzag that seem to be sure it's perfect. And then now I'm figuring out if I put the side, big gingham side or small gingham side. I mean, as you can see, some of the squares are smaller. And I think I'm going to put the small squares on the side. I think it's going to contour the bodice in a nice way. And so here I'm trying the princess seams and it's going quite well so far. I'm quite pleased. Obviously, this is the lining and it's fairly stable to sew with. So it's easy and nice. So all going well. I'm really, really pleased with how it looks with the small squares on the side. Truly, I'm happy with what's going on there. I think it looks good. It looks neat. So yeah, happy. I was so worried about this fraying. So even though this is going to be fully enclosed in the lining, I have zigzagged everything. I have zigzagged the beep out of this. So it should be fine and really, really long lasting, hopefully. Hi, it's Sunday. So we voted this morning and then my wife has actually been asked to be at the voting polling station all day. So she's staying there all day. So no video games noises in the background today. I have not done so much yesterday. I had pieced the bodice and bodice lining and now I've just sewn them together. And one extra step that I have done is zigzag everything because I am worried that it is going to fray from the inside. So to avoid any inside fraying, I am. I hope that I'm not gonna regret having zigzag it when it's time to turn it over, crossing my fingers, but it's just, I have had stuff in the past that really frays from the inside. So I decided not to do this this time and to really be sure that everything is properly zigzag. I need to fully cut all of my threads now. So I've just turned my lining inside out. So now it's the right way around. It's attached like this. It's not attached on both sides yet. Be careful because the pattern is kind of not telling you so much, but obviously you do want to press it after you've turned it back the right way around. So, you know, you press all of this so that it's sitting with the lining not poking out. I think it's showing a tiny bit here, just with the size of the lining. I think there's going to be little bits where it shows, but I don't think it matters too much. I think it worked quite well, but I'm going to show you how they attach their shoulders because it can be a bit confusing from the way they explain it. So here I have lining side and lining side and I'm going to put right side to right side. So the lining is on the outside here and then I'm going to put right sides together of just the main fabric. So this bit, I'm going to pull the lining out here, pull the lining out of the way here and just sew at one centimeter seam allowance the main fabric together. Okay, so the advantage is that you can clearly see this is my main fabric, the gingham, and then the lining is the blue and green. I have sewn the two layers of gingham together and now there's the lining those two bits still not attached. So what I have done, and I've already pulled it on the other side to show you, I've re reached through, put my finger through here, pull it back out, and that's what it looks like. So you have the gingham that has been sewn, and then you have the lining. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to re-pull this apart. So this is the gingham that has been already sewn together. I'm going to pin it down so it's really out of the way and I'm going to sew together now the two lining pieces. And so then it's going to be properly shut inside and out. That seam here is quite bulky. So this is the already sewn bit of the strap and this is the two seam allowances. I still need to sew together. So I've pulled out my zipper foot to be able to actually go really near the edge of that really big bulk here. Okay, and then after having sewn the inside, you just re-pull it and it comes out by itself. You just pull it back and that's it. One thing I am wondering is why they're not fully, I don't know, it looks like it's not fully lined up. Like if you look, this looks like it's a little bit wider here not fully, fully getting the engineering behind this strap, but it worked. It's fully sewn and enclosed on both sides. So not too, too bad the way this worked. 
I have started to add the waistband. So the waistband lining, yes, it's still another piece. It's going to look a bit crazy inside. Waistband lining and waistband outer layer are both attached and I have zigzagged the edge once more because I am so, 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 so scared of this to fray. I am now going to zigzag this edge and this edge, most importantly, and then I will attach the, well, I need to make the skirt. Oh my God. But once the skirt is made, I'm going to attach the skirt to this side and then fold this over, attach it with neatly, but then everything here is going to be still zigzagged inside. It's starting to look like what it's going to look like. It's quite nice when you can start to picture the finished garment in your head. I'm feeling quite exhausted today. I have to say it's been quite a week and quite a weekend. Sorry, I'm slouching a bit to be in the shot. And I don't know, so I have this done. I just need to do the skirt bit, which isn't so hard. It's just adding the pockets and finishing the skirt and then attaching it. But then there's still the zip and the hem. And I do want to finish. So I was like, oh, do I do French seams inside the skirt or not? Because I just don't want any raw edges left in this. And I think what I'm going to do is cover them with bias tape. So I need to make bias tape. I need to cover the everything in bias tape. So that includes the pockets, pocket bags, I mean the pocket bags and the sides of the skirt. And I don't want to slave away doing the sewing. What's happening is that I don't have a video for Monday night and I'm like, oh, I want the dress to be finished for Monday night for my Monday night video. But at the same time, I'm trying to remind myself that I am sewing for pleasure and you can look at Milo while I complain. I'm trying to remind myself that I am sewing for pleasure and so therefore I maybe don't want to sew all of the weekend away. It's also one of the first days you can see the sun, sun, one of the nice first sunny days in Belgium and kind of want to make the most of it. And I don't know, I don't want to feel like I just forced myself to sew through the weekend. So yeah, feeling, feeling a bit rough. I don't know, I'm really feeling exhausted. <laughs> Are you? Oh my God. But globally, Past the exhaustion, I'm quite happy. I really wondered a lot about putting the small squares on the side. I think it's going to be quite a cool effect. And also the belt in the bigger squares. Maybe there's no videos on Monday. That's going to be my first time not having two videos a week. It feels weird, but maybe, maybe it's the time. Oh, and I want to show you. I'm currently watching Steph Sohn because one of you told me that it would be interesting. I'll reveal my to watch list to you, but there's also the Maya bra up there that I've been watching. Hi, so today's a little bit crazy because it's actually Wednesday lunchtime and I never ever do that. I never sew during the work week, even in the evening during the work week. It's quite uncommon because I really like to feel like I have a ton of time in front of me to sew. So I really prefer sewing on the weekend. Maybe in the evening during the work week, I'm going to prep my fabric, maybe cut my fabric. But really like sewing. I've, I need to feel like I have a ton of time in front of me. So I never do it during the week. But here I'm like, okay, if I want this dress to finally come out on Friday, I have basically only, like I'm not there tonight. I am at a knitting workshop and then there's tomorrow night, Thursday, and then I need to finish the dress, edit the video and get it scheduled for Friday morning. So basically what I have decided to do is to sew during my lunch break today. So I have half an hour for lunch. So I decided I'm literally going to put a timer and I thought I would do as much as possible in half an hour. I feel like if I have the time pressure, I might do a little bit more than I normally would in a normal half hour of sewing. And this way I'm feeling a bit less stress about Thursday night and having to finish everything and do everything on Thursday night. I'm at the stage, I think I already told you that I constantly have that as soon as I start a project, I'm like, oh, I'm almost finished because it looks like something. So I have, you, you've already seen this, I have the bodice done. And so it truly feels like, oh, well, you put the skirt up and it's done. But realistically, the skirt is adding the pockets to the skirt and then adding the zipper that still fully needs to be done, hemming. I need to finish the seams, which I want to do with bias tape. So it's still a little bit of work. It's doable, but I think doing half an hour of work on it now is going to ease my mind for Thursday when I want to 
blast through it, finishing, edit the video and get everything done. I'm really curious if on Friday I will have that video up with the dress or not. We shall see, we shall see. My assistant is also feeling the stress of having to finish as much as possible in half an hour. Go, go, go! Um, 26 minutes in and I have sewn the pockets on. It's also because I'm trying to finish stuff really well to be honest. The um, pattern just called for you to sew the pocket and then understitch the pocket bag but I wanted to also zigzag it because I've been zigzagging everything in this pattern to make sure that the double goes isn't free on me and then I have the pocket bag that's matching the other way and now I want to put a bias tape on the outside of my pocket so it's really well finished so the next steps but I'm not gonna have time because my lunch break is already running out so the pocket is basically done it's done on this side as well I mean I don't think you can see with all the gingham putting the bias tape around the edge of the pocket to make sure it doesn't fray and then I'm going to base stitch the pockets on the side here and Milo is still having a great lunch break. Lucky him. Let's say things as they are. I would totally lose in the sewing bee. Um, if, if in half an hour I've done only this, I still have quite a bit of work to do. It's because I'm trying to do things well and obviously life, you know, I'm not in a show and this is not a rate. By the way, I keep talking about the bee. I'm talking at the Great British Sewing Bee. It's back on at the moment. It's really exciting. So yeah, still, um, yeah, I thought that I would get more than that done in half an hour, but better work well done than a job rushed, I guess. Okay, done with the gingham, back to work. Okay, with Thursday night, I'm back from work and we are finishing this dress. It is just 8 p.m. I've had dinner, I've walked the dog, let's go. You don't put a basting stitch on the top because you're gonna gather here while not catching the pocket bag, so this needs to not be attached to the pocket bag. So basing stitch, yes, on the side, not on the top for the pockets. Bias tape is placed on the pockets and on the side seam here. I think it looks quite cute. And that's not both bias tape. That is bias tape I made from leftover viscose I had. I always do only one line of gathering stitches because unpicking the second line that is outside of the seam allowance is the most hated thing I have to do in life, so I never do it. I think it's fine at the back. This is a bit big, but it's fine. But at the front, and because it's just on the tummy area, I'm not really happy with it, so I'm unpicking. So. It's flat on the pockets, but here this should be gathered and it's not in the same on the other side. And I find this really not fine enough. So I'm going to unpick all of this and try to regather it so it gathers also here where it should be a bit more gathered and so that this is less gathered because I find that this is way too bumpy on the tummy. So having fun unpicking so many layers because double goes, double goes here. Thanks, Milo. And then, yeah, all the layers, it's, it's very thick. The most satisfying thing is when you manage to just pull a big strand of your stitches in one go, like, shoo. but there's so many layers, it's just not coming. It's not coming in one nice pull. So annoying. It's also like, the stitches are really deep into the double goes, so I really need to go and like get the thread out without pulling the threads of the double goes, which, you know, you can really see all the little threads of the fabric with this. Okay, I'm gonna try to pull this. Yes, a tiny bit, okay. Okay, I'm not annoyed because I wanted the invisible zip to be between the lining and the main fabric, but it seems in the construction that they just finish the edge and then just put the zip. 
that's a lot less neat, isn't it? But like with the fact that now the lining is attached to the skirt and everything, I don't think I can, I mean, I can't have the zip going here because this is attached. I haven't finished, this is the waistband and I still need to put the inside of the waistband attached. But I was first checking if I needed it to be unattached for the zip. But yeah, I think I would have found it such a neat and nice finish to have a really, really cool edge to, you know, the, the zipper between the lining and everything. But that's just not going to be possible if this is attached. No, it's not. Oh, this is annoying. This is not what I wanted. <laughs> Throw the dress away. <laughs> I'm not going to, but well, okay. This is, it's now quarter past nine. I'm gonna try to finish this. So attach the waistband, put the zip and hem and finish the edge on the left side. We can do this. This is always my worst nightmare. I've dropped one of my pins and I'm like, I don't dare to move. I'm scared to step on it. I'm really scared that Milo's gonna come and step on it. Can you guys see it? Milo and I are looking for the missing pin. Gotcha. There it is. Okay, we can go back. Go back to the zipper. A very hated task as I don't have an invisible zipper foot. I find it a bit of a pain to sew without it, but we keep going. It's almost 10 p.m. I need to finish the zipper and hem. Yes, my little bug bug. Oh, my stitch in the ditch. I had to redo some bits because some had not caught at the back. I think I'm arriving at a point in my sewing. I mean, honestly, once I'm gonna be wearing it, you're not gonna be able to tell. But I also think I arrive at a point in my sewing when I'm gonna have to do a uh, slip stitch in the inside soon because that's starting to bother me. Old knowing me didn't mind, but I'm getting more and more of a perfectionist with my sewing. We're at the stage of the evening when Milo sits basically on the presser foot of my sewing machine and I'm like, please move over, but it just gets a bit clingy in the evening. Don't you, Milo? I hate invisible zips and especially at the waistline, it's always the worst. Oh, it's past 10 now. I'm also wondering, no, I need to go in. I always, always need to go back. Like literally I've never done, again, I don't have a invisible zipper foot. And the reason why I don't have one is that people have been saying that machine is not a good machine. And I'm thinking that maybe I'll have to change at some point. And so I don't want to buy all of the feet if I'm going to change machine. But right now, like this is not good. So I'm gonna try to go back once more and stitch closer to the zipper teeth. We have reached the point of this project where I just want to cry, give up, <laughs> throw the dress away. It's partly because I really want the video to go up tomorrow and it's like this zipper is really giving me grievance and I still need to hem this dress once I've finished the zipper. It's like I'm two steps away from finish, but it's already getting so late. And I'm really not getting any better with the zipper. I'm trying to sew again closer to the zipper teeth and I'm not going anywhere closer. Last time I had done it by hand, it wasn't any better. I've tried to iron it so that the fabric folds over the zipper, but it really doesn't work at the waistline. I will try once more but I'm literally considering having a really visible zipper in this project and calling it a day. I'm just so fed up. It's also that I'm really not happy. Like I really wanted the zipper to be nice and tucked into the lining. Like this is not, not nice. This is not bringing me joy. Sorry, I will calm down. I'll try one last time on the zipper. I'm having stuff sewn with me one of you recommended her to me and i've been like this is so i've watched a lot of her newest video and now this is her first video because i'm going back from the start once i've tested if i like the new things then i kind of like go back from the start and watch in order and comment okay let's try this one more time and if not i think i'll leave it like this and maybe i try to fix it later on in the life of the dress i just want to finish at this point okay we're gonna call this better um, this is not as bad. If you pull it, you can still see some of the zipper, but it's, it's definitely better except, ah, here. 
but I'm going to take the, like, it's just difficult because here there's the pocket and the pocket lining and I feel like with the extra book, it has been a bit more tricky, but yay for the top. Okay, that looks, no, that's better. I'm going to be able to live with this. We are having this beep and, <laughs> and we've finished. <laughs> Woohoo! And then I can start editing the video, which I feel is going to be so long because I've talked so much. We are today the 13th of June and I started this dress before I started filming, but I started the first clips that I filmed in this video are from the 5th of April. So yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a while. Actually, I think I am going to quickly try it on just to know, oh my God, I need to, I need to first finish the side seam under the zipper god i still need to do that okay finishing that first and then i think i'll still try it on just to tell myself can i do a generous hem do i need to do a very small hem because i didn't have enough fabric so i was originally going to make something totally different with this fabric and then i decided to change for this pattern but so i didn't have enough quite enough fabric to make it following the pattern's recommendation i really tried to do some smart tetris i had to cut the skirt panels a lot shorter than they originally were meant to be which is fine because i think it would have been a bit long originally but i kind of need to see how short it's actually becoming now forgive that i'm not wearing the right bra for this the length is fine it's not hemmed yet so i think i really want to do the smallest hem possible but guys the fit in the bodice is just not that's just not it <laughs> i'm to stay drunk burn the dress <laughs> i'm just so over it oh dear oh this is not this is not what we want is it it's I'm gonna try it with a more padded bra to see if that helps. Okay, fine, it was the bra. It's still a little bit wide, but it's not nowhere near as crazy as it was before. It makes more sense now with the bra. It's filled the right way. The light is very unflattering. Okay, now I'm like, no, it's fine. I really enjoy the fact that the gingham changes and goes like this into the pocket. That's something I'm really happy with. Okay, smallest hem possible and we're finished. And I think what I'm gonna try to do is film a few seconds tomorrow morning when the light is a bit nicer so you can see it in its full glory. Milo has fully given up, so I'm here ironing the hem and Milo's just given up on life. Hey, it's the next morning, that's it. So I'm not too happy with this. I think it's still a little bit wide in the bust, but to be honest, I think I'm going to first take it for a ride and then see if I want to maybe, you know, pin it a little bit, add a couple of darts or something. I, I think I'm gonna have to because it's, I don't know, it's on the wider side, but in a not so flattering way, I feel like, you know, if it went a bit tighter around the bust, it'd be nicer. I'm really happy I shortened the skirt. I think that's a really good length as it is. Yeah, I think it just makes the top a bit wide as it is now. But yeah, otherwise, not too unhappy. Mostly happy it's over, to be fully honest. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's that. We've made it. That's it, we've made it to the end. It's Friday morning, I'm literally filming this, adding it to the video, and we're starting work. So I'm glad I made it on time. So I'm not mad about the fit, honestly. It's quite wide in the bust, and I have kind of looked on Instagram, and I'm not the only one saying that the bust is drafted too big. I also find that the skirt it's originally planned at a really awkward length. I shortened it and I saw many people on Instagram have too. Now, it's always the thing when it's like, well, it's a free pattern. So maybe you shouldn't expect too much because you didn't pay for it. But at the same time, I feel like for me, it's a bit of a tester of the designer behind a free pattern because with Peppermint, they always partner with different designers. And so for me, it's a test of the designer. And if I don't like what we've done here, I'm not going to go back for one of the patterns because because it wasn't a good experience. I also have grievances with the booklets. There was two drawings. So once I was trying to figure out and be sure that I was sewing those sides panels, like which ones were the front and which ones were the back. And in real life, the front ones were wider, but on the drawings, I'll put it all on screen, the back ones were wider and so it didn't match what was the reality and for me 
it's important that whatever is in your booklet matches what the pieces actually look like in real life. Because even though you mark them and it's fine, but it reassures me to look and to feel like, yes, this is the piece. It looks like what it is in the booklet. It looks like the reality and it's all clear. Maybe I'm making a big fuss about nothing, but that really bugged me. And then also for the gathering here. So you had to gather all the way here. And obviously there's the pocket bags that come here behind and you had to make sure to not gather the pocket bags into the, um, the gathering stitches. Otherwise they would be gathered as well and you don't want your pocket bags to be gathered. But on the image, the gathering stitch just go over the pockets. You're not gathering the pockets and they say it in the explanation, but the drawing makes it look like the gathering stitch is just going over. And that, again, maybe I'm making a big fuss about nothing, but I look at the images a lot and that bothered me. That bothered me that it was like, what's happening? I don't understand what's happening there. And then I went and compared and I understood what was happening, but that just to me shows a not ideal quality in the booklet. So yeah, lastly, I want to touch on the double goals because I talked so much about how scared I was about it. And I think if I had not heard the podcast that made me a bit worried about the double goals, I would not have thought twice about it. I would just have done it. And that would have been it. Yes, it frays, but I have used some rayons that frayed a ton more than this. So really, ignorance is bliss. I feel like if I had not known, I would just have gone for it, not thought twice about it and it would have been fine. I'm happy I knew because I was really considerate with my finishes. And as you saw, there's bias tape everywhere or everything's enclosed and it should be really long lasting and nothing's gonna fray touch woods. But yeah, sometimes just being told it's going to be hard makes it worse, but it's not actually that hard. It's actually fine. So just shows really not to be scared. If you want to make something, just go for it. If you are being told it's going to be hard, it's just going to make it harder. Just just do it. But yeah, I think that's basically everything I wanted to touch on today. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I think it's going to be quite long because I filmed it over so long. Hope it's not too whingy. It was a bit of a drama moment at the <laughs> yesterday night when I was like, am I going to make it or not? But we have a happy ending for this movie, so it's all good. And yeah, I think at some point I'll do something about the bodice right now. I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to wear it and see how it goes, but I believe it's going to need fixing at some point. And can I just re-say how much I love, 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 love this panel that has the small gingham and that is interrupted by the skirt. I think that's really, really cool. I really, really love this part. So that's something I'm really happy with. Now I am going to go and start my work day. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to come back for more sewing with me. Bye. And don't forget that you can make anything, including using fabrics that are scaring you, but that's actually not that bad. You can make anything. Bye. You still here? Well then, I have some Milo and Brussels wildlife vlogging for you. Enjoy! Milo is extremely unhappy about the foxes. He does not like foxes in his garden. She's not going to come back tonight. Milo, it's just us two tonight. I'm sorry. No, she's not coming back. She's staying at work. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, yes. Oh my God, we just went to the garden for Milo's nighttime walk. And I mean, not walk, but you know, I just take him to the garden before bed. So he had a last pee. And there were four foxes just behind the door. So we didn't go in the garden, we went at the front. 
it was really like we opened the door and there were all of the foxes and obviously I just show them to you and they're really cute in the garden when we're not in there but like I don't really want Milo to have an interaction with four foxes he was like he's not the bravest so he was a bit growly and a bit like oh my god what what are all those foxes just behind the door but they also freaked out from me opening the door and they started running in all the direction and yeah it was high stress evening outing wasn't it poppy yes can we imagine I mean, it was just, I was really like, oh my God, so many foxes, what do I do? What do I do with all of them? So we just went at the front and I think Milo's ready for bed and I'm ready for bed too. Still upset at the foxes, fair enough, but that's how it is. We need to share our garden with the foxes because we live in the city. That's how it is. My dog. Okay, well, now I'll really leave you. Bye, thanks for watching.